All right, today we are in lesson five, and we're going through the book, uh, Fearless Conversations, Why is Jesus so Radical? And today's lesson is, what does it mean if Jesus really is God's son? So, I don't know if you've ever thought about that. <coughs> What is the implications there? Um, we're not going to do everything that this uh, book asks us to do. One of the things that they said for the leader to do is to provide a, a short little video clip of a child prodigy. Um, you know, like a kid that played the piano at age four, you know, something grandiose and uh, how people are so drawn and uh, so interested in watching talent at such a, a young age. It, it's just uh, something that attracts attention. And it also makes uh, the parents feel proud. Uh, but uh, one of the first questions in our discussion today, talking about talent is think about yourself, your own life. What talents or abilities do you have that maybe people don't know about? And uh, the book says, you know, things like uh, you're a pretty good cook. Maybe people don't know that about you. Can you do backflips? Steve, you once. once. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and, and maybe it, it I know that when I went to some, when I was working full time as a pharmacist and would go to the meetings, they would ask it a similar question, and people were amazed that I had gone and got my pilot's license. Uh, but uh, so think about it. What anybody want to share? What is a, a talent that you have that maybe people don't know about? Anybody? Okay. Because my, my humor is pretty good. What's that? I have a unique humor. A unique humor? There you go. I can grab a truck without knowing anybody. That's a talent. The other than not. Yeah. Um, but today we're going to be grappling with the uh, questions related to Jesus as God's Son and. Uh, and it's, we're going to be reading some scriptures of how three of the disciples discovered his true identity. Now, we know from reading the, the Bible that Jesus came on the scene uh, when he was baptized by John the Baptist. And John the Baptist was widely recognized as a prophet. And... Uh, so when he said something, the people listened. As a matter of fact, they listened and accepted what John said so much that the Pharisees were afraid of John. And uh, there were references in the Bible where, um, where Jesus challenged the Pharisees to a question. And they said, well, what, by what authority are you doing these things? He says, and I'll ask you a question first, and if you answer mine, I'll answer yours. And he said, uh, the baptism of John, is it from men or from God? And uh, Pharisees reasoned to themselves. They said, well, if, if we say uh, of God, then Jesus is going to say, well, then why didn't you believe him? Because he identified Jesus as the Son of God. And if we say of men... They're afraid that the people might stone them because, uh, stone the Pharisees because they held John the Baptist to be a, a, a true prophet. So they said, well, we don't know. And Jesus said, then neither will I answer your question or tell you. So the point is, is though that Jesus, even though he had some notoriety and people thought of him as a great miracle worker and a prophet, his true identity as the Son of God 
was really revealed on the Mount of Transfiguration to the three disciples, Peter, James, and John. And we're going to read that in just a little bit. But think about it. All of us are Christians. So, you know, do, do people know our true identity? Uh, do our friends, our, our people at work, know that we're true Christians? Or do we just seem like one of the guys, just one of the crowd, just, you know, nothing special, hey, kind of talented in this and that, but uh, do they know our true identity as Christians? That's something that we need to think about. And why? Have we ever shared? Have we uh, lived in front of them to such a degree that they can pick up, you know, maybe we, when somebody is telling an off-color joke, we, we say, hey, man, I don't listen to that sort of stuff. You know, and they didn't say, well, you know, there's things that we should be doing different in our lives that will attract some attention. Jesus said, a city set on a hill cannot be hidden. And let your light shine in such a way that they, you know, see your good deeds, see your lifestyle, see the fact that you are one of his followers and, you know, give glory to God. Um, just trying to, okay, let's just go ahead and get into Luke chapter 9. Uh, we're going to be reading a lot of verses today. It's going to be verse 18 through 36. So, um, yeah. so uh, who wants to read like the first three verses? Steve, go ahead. While Jesus was praying in private and his disciples were with him, he asked them, Who do the crowds say I am? They replied, Some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah. And so others, that one of the prophets long ago has come back to life. But what about you? He asked. And you say I am. Peter answered, God's Messiah. Wow. Okay, so here he is. He's actually being. Peter actually sees his true identity. Okay, who wants to read uh, 21 through 26? Uh, that's a big chunk. Anybody? Angel, can you do that? No. Okay. You did 21, you said? Verse 21 through 26. That's a big reading. Go ahead. All right. It says, then Jesus, the mother and brother, came to see him. But they could not get into because of the crowd. Some, someone told Jesus, your mother and brother stand outside. They no, no, I think you're in the wrong chapter. It, it's Luke chapter 9. Oh. Luke chapter 9. Yeah, verse 21. Verse 21. All right, it says, Jesus, Jesus wanted the disciples not to tell anyone who he, he was. The Son of Man must suffer many terrible things. He said, He said he would be re re rejected. So, leaders left. and religion fall, he, he will be killed, but the one of the third day, he will be raised from the dead. Then he said to the crowd, if you, if any of you wanted to be by the follower, you must 
you must give to you your own way. Take up your cross daily and follow me. Okay. If you try to hang on your life, you will be lost. But if you give 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 your life to for my Jesus says, what good is it for someone to gain the whole world, yet lose or forfeit their very self? Some translations say soul. Whoever is ashamed of me and my words, the Son of Man will be ashamed of him who comes into his glory and in the glory of the Father and of the holy angels. We're in Luke chapter 9. The title of this lesson, again, is What Does It Mean If Jesus Really Is God's Son? And what are the implications? We talked about the fact that uh, Jesus started his ministry. Uh, he did miracles. He attracted crowds. But a lot of people just assumed he was a prophet and didn't quite know his true identity. He never identified himself with the crowds. And uh, we're just reading here where Peter, when Jesus confronted his disciples, who do you say that I am? It was Peter that said, you are the Messiah, God's Messiah, the Son of the living God. And Jesus strictly told them not to tell anybody but the whole lesson here is about what does it mean if Jesus really is God's son? I mean, anybody today can stand up and go out on the street and start saying, I'm, I'm the Messiah. And even Jesus in the Bible warns us that there's going to be false messiahs. But what does it mean if Jesus really is uh, God's son? That's the question that we're grappling with today. So, can somebody read, um, let's see, verse uh, 27, Luke 9, verse 27 through 31. Eric, go ahead. Truly I tell you, some who are standing here will not take step before they see the kingdom of God. About eight days after Jesus said this, he took Peter, John, and James, with him and went up to the onto a mountain to pray. And he was praying the uh, as he was praying, the appearance of his face changed, and his clothes became a bright as a flash of lightning. Two men, Moses and Elijah, appeared in the glorious splendor talking to Jesus. They spoke about his departure, which he was about to bring to fulfillment at, at Jerusalem. So somebody wanna read uh 32 and 33. Go ahead. Peter and his companion were very sleepy, but when they became fully awake, they saw his glory and the two men standing with him. As the men were leaving, Jesus, Peter said to them, Master, is it good for us to be here? Let us put up three shelters, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He did not know what he was saying. While he was speaking, a cloud appeared and covered them. And while they were afraid, as they entered the cloud, a voice came from, from the cloud, saying, This is my son, whom I have chosen. Listen to him. When the voice had spoken, they found that Jesus was alone. The disciples kept this to themselves and did not tell anyone at, this time what, uh, at that time what they had seen. Okay. So I want everyone to reflect for a minute 
verses that we just read. And um, what, what sort of takeaways, what, what stands out to you? Yes, John. This is probably the biggest thing, one of the biggest things in the New Testament, other than the resurrection, this is the, um, this is the transfiguration. So um, I've got my, I've got my Bible. Uh, Moses leads pretty much the physical exodus, and Elijah leads the spiritual exodus. Therefore, it's, that's why it's so important that they're there talking to Jesus, because these are two of the biggest, you know, guys that lead in all of Israel. So it's really important for them to be there. And then they say, "Listen to him. Like that's God's son. Listen to him." So it's pretty big. In, other, in another sense, it's like Jesus is literally leading the exodus out of the slavery to sin. Anyone else? Your, your thoughts? Or something stand out? It's almost like it's coming out hard, you know, like, yeah, like, a, like a full-fledged, like, this is, you know, it's not just talk or something, like I really am, and it's weird that they didn't tell anybody. Maybe they're just kind of like in shock or something, or maybe he said not to do it or something. Yeah, that's that's what it said. Uh, he said not to tell them. Yeah. But you know, I might have. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm a free now. <laughs> yeah, it says don't to don't. <laughs> well, of course, he told Peter when you know when Peter had that revelation, you know. Not to tell anyone. Right, and that was like a small version of this. And and really, if you read in in the in the account of the transfiguration, Jesus told his disciples not to tell anyone until after his uh, resurrection. Yeah. So there were some things that uh, still needed to be hidden until the proper time. Anybody else? Well, uh, that was the Father's affirmation of the Son. And all the times before when God the Father affirmed something, it was answered by fire. Uh, it was um, it, it was usually very traumatic. Um, ground opened up, swallowing people. Okay. And at this point in time, um, it's almost like a within nothing um, with his with his, with his his ascension in the in, in, in that revelation, it was actually uh, in a peace. Okay, it was almost a, a sign of the new covenant. Okay, it was before people um, people he, 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 he thundered and shook prior. Okay, yeah. um, that all the, the God was God was very clear. Okay. He, God, uh, this wasn't the first time, though, that people heard the voice of God. Remember back at the baptism of Jesus. Well, that was, that was yeah, he said, and, and we had the dove. Of course, I guess you could say that's the Holy Spirit's affirmation. Uh -huh. Okay, in, in, the, in the form of the dove, as it says. Um, uh -huh. But yeah, it's, uh, but, the, but it, then it was on Christ. Yes. So it's the, it, it's the, the, the God of speaking was in, in a peaceful manner, uh, okay, um, was on Christ. Right. Okay. Right. I mean, the, 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 everything we did, read under the laws, even the pillar of fire is something you don't walk into. You know, when you protected the Israelites, um, the part of the Red Sea that ended up winding up for death for, for all the chariots and horses. Yes. It wasn't for everybody. That's okay. true. I mean, kind of like, and Jesus, and Jesus spoke in parables. It's, it's kind of, um, at this point in time, God goes to um, actually wanting to be sought out. Okay. Rather than um, just all here like the table, you know. Uh-huh. You bump into him. Right. Yeah. That's, that's a good point. 
point. I, 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 I like that. Uh, God wants us to seek Him out. So some of the things that He does. Right, right. The parables that He spoke in. Right. Um, the, um, who He was sent to. Okay. Right. Um, the, um, the, yeah, it's kind of like when you start speaking to somebody, I almost in a whisper, you're drawing closer. You know? <laughs> yeah. Anybody else? Have something like that. Yes, at least. I thought verse 32 was interesting. It says that Peter and his companions were very sleepy, but when they became fully awake, they saw the story. Uh -huh. Reminded me of the garden of Gethsemane, where Jesus was trying to wake them up because they were tired and he kept like, begging them to stay awake. Or then the other verse is how spiritually God wants us to be awake and vigilant to pay attention. Mm -hmm. I know that if I'm just physically and I'm in a room and it's dark and someone turns the light on, I don't need to be fully awake to recognize there's a light on. But here it said when they were fully awake, they were able to recognize what was happening. So I just thought that it drew importance to how God wants us to be. Right. That's right. Sometimes we're not fully awake spiritually. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's true. We're, we're not fully awake. But I, I like that that God God sometimes does things that only those who want Him, who want to seek it out, that, you know, it, it's not like again. Everybody said, "Well, sh God, just show yourself, and we'll believe." Right? Just, just. You know, the Pharisees said, all right, just do a miracle for us. You know, they tried to test Jesus, and he said, no, uh, a wicked and adulterous generation seeks for a sign, but none will be given except the sign of Jonah the prophet. And, and that's, the people says, give us proof that you're God. But Jesus said, uh, even if through through the story of the rich man and Lazarus, Jesus said, even if someone comes back from the dead, they won't believe. And Jesus came back from the dead, and people still don't believe. And God wants people to love it because they want to, not because he just shows up with miracles. You know, that when he was, when Jesus was coming back uh, to Jerusalem, riding on the colt, you know, the crowds were like going wild and, and uh, there were also times when uh, they want Jesus perceived that they were going to take Jesus and make him king by force, you know, because of all of the great miracles and the power that he was doing. But that God doesn't want people to accept him just because he's great and powerful. Yes, Eric? That reminds me, I, I just read Revelation last night. And it was like, you know, he, they were like, who can, who can open the seals? And it's like, oh, the lion of Judah, this big, you know, beasty, uh -huh. you know, this big thing. It's like a big show. And he turned around, it's just like a little lamb, like, who's like been, like, bloody. And it's like, you know, we have our own <coughs> thought of what it might look like. But then in reality, this is, you know, like, he looks different sometimes. Like, it's, uh, and it's kind of uh, not what you would expect. With ten eye rolls. What's that? With ten eyeballs. <laughs> but but God God wants us to seek Him. I I think that's uh, and and even Jesus, you know, he, he he did do the miracles. He did do the works that testified to who He was. But He did just blurted out that I am the Messiah, uh, at least not to the crowds, in some private settings like with the woman at the well, he said, I who speak to you of he. But, but God does. He wants us, he wants humanity to seek him out because that, that shows that we have a true desire for him and not just a, you know, 
a desire for just power and, and lights and special effects, right? Um, people want, they, he fed the, the multitudes and they, like I said, they wanted to make him king because he said, and you, and he said you're, you're seeking me because you got your fill of the loaves. <laughs> Uh, right. um, she mentioned in verse 32, um, in verse 32, it talked about them being fully awake. They were very sleepy, of course, but the fully awake, I, I talked to people, other than using the phrase being born again, when they have gone through uh, some form of brokenness in their life, but when their eyes are open, about, you know, the cloud, uh, uh, which was obviously the presence of God, and the voice of God actually spoke, and, and this was like a, uh, a turning point in Jesus' ministry, because even the conversation before they went up there, he talked about the fact of what was coming up now, because I'm Messiah, I've got to finish crucified. Yes, John. I think it kind of plays into whatever Elijah prophesied that there would be a cloud because it was during that time of drought. Mm -hmm. Was it Elijah? Yeah. It Elijah. yeah. And he prophesied that a cloud the size of his hand is coming forth and that there's no more uh, drought necessarily so Jesus is kind of like that reenactment as well. Like there's a cloud coming and it's going to give. There's no more drought in other words. Right. Like God's here with you spiritually and physically. Yeah. You know, it, at this point, uh, the disciples and a lot of the people might have, and they did, a lot of them had it in mind. Well, now, you know, he, he's going to, he's just told us he's Messiah, and now the kingdom's going to come, and, and we're going to overthrow Rome, and there's going to be a final victory. Um, but Really, that wasn't God's plan. We know that because we get to read ahead. But they didn't know that. And I think that's another reason why the voice of God said, listen to him. You know, don't have your preconceived ideas about what's going to happen next. Listen to him because Jesus, and he, he did that in just the previous verses, he said, you know, the Son of Man is going to go up to Jerusalem where he's going to be rejected and, and all of these bad things and crucified. And, and they just they just blew right past it and, and people were thinking, ah, the kingdom's coming. So, anybody's thought on that? 
as it applies to us today. We have our preconceived ideas about what, what's going to happen next. <laughs> yeah, we're given revelation and some prophecies, but uh, any thoughts on that? Anybody? I guess that goes back to uh, the, you know, not putting God or Jesus in a certain box. Box or, you know, barrier. You know, just don't restrain because it's, you know, it's an eternal, all powerful God we're talking about here. So it's like, you can't really limit him just to your own even imagination. It's, it's beyond that. His ways are above you. So it's a lot. I, I think about how when we, you know, every Christmas we read the prophecies of the coming Messiah and the birth of Jesus. And we say, oh yeah, we see it. The virgin, the child, all of these things, Emmanuel. But if you were living back then like the Jews were, I mean, they, they knew that the Messiah was going to be born in Bethlehem. You know, they, they did have their facts straight, but some things they didn't have straight. And hindsight's always 2020. We, we can see it. We can connect the dots because we know the story. And it's kind of like the same thing with Revelation right now. We, we, we're living like the, the Jews did back then. And, and we're trying to, to, we get some facts right. We know the, the Bible says this. But uh, overall, the, the way it will unfold, it might be very different than what we have a preconceived idea. And still the, the command, I think, is relevant. Listen to him. It's like, yeah, get your eschatology right, but uh, live for the moment. Live for such a time as this with your plans, you know, God's calling on your life. One might say, be awake. Be awake. That's it. Fulfill no, plans and purposes. Wonderful. Okay, um, let's see. Uh, some of these questions in, in the uh, leader's guide. I'm... Okay, here's a, here's a good question. Uh, what is the significance of Jesus' transfiguration? Why didn't Jesus just come out and tell the disciples who he was from the start. I mean, these were the select guys that he selected. Why didn't he tell them from the start? Well, I think timing is always important. As he said, you know, multiple times, not his time yet. Um, but why it's not his time is important more, I would say. Maybe, uh, he wanted to like lay a foundation first. You know, if he just drops the mic on him or drops the bomb, mm -hmm. then it's, you know, they might not be able to process it. Uh, uh, before, he, before he said who he was or came out, if you want to call what he's trying to say, um, Nathaniel, um, and um, even with Peter's brother, they were recognized. Mature, um, immaturity and maturity might be why, one of the reasons why he did not reveal himself to that. And, but how God moves is, is, is just as important that, that he did move. Mm -hmm. and, and, and kind of the way you approach something yeah. is what determines the outcome of the result. Yeah. And the approach yeah. he took recognized by his father, okay, and, and one of the things that amazes me is um, Jesus never spoke of his own will, mm -hmm. okay, from day one to, to the end, he never spoke of his own will, he spoke of the will of his father, even as a child, he said, I got to be about my father's business, yes. okay, and, um, and, and his temptation was to Try to have him step into his own will mm -hmm. apart from the Father. Yes. Okay. So um, I think that that kind of goes into the the question why 
submission of will, right. and, 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 and not coming to say, hey, guys, I'm in it. You know? uh, yeah. Um, yeah. And, and uh, quite often, I mean, Christ, of course, he has, who do you say that I am? You know, is he, he, uh, he, he opened their minds with, with, with questions. And the Lord, uh, upon part of the seeking God is, is a development of curiosity. Being revealed that there's a little more, and yeah. then for, what does our heart want to do with it? Right. Now that we know a little bit, okay, we're going to just shelf it. We're going to put it off. We're going to how do we deal with it? You know, okay. how do we process it? And, and, yeah. um, uh, processing God is uh, is a, I think it just doesn't have an end. It, 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 it does that's end. that's it. Doesn't, it doesn't have an end. Have as soon as we think we got it figured out, so we'll we never realize, it. We realize we're back to square one again. <laughs> At least, did you have something? I think it has a lot to do with um, Jesus, or God in the beginning said that when he spoke, and then it was so. And when, um, we can say like actions speak louder than words, but then words also speak for themselves as well, and Jesus is the word, so like he was already there, it's just now he's just showing what that is and what that means and what that looks like. And then, because um, his the word never falls void, and so if God is the word or Jesus is the word of God, then he's just manifesting uh-huh. what those word what that word is. And so I think it's it's pretty cool. I've been um, reading about like purification lately, and. Um, one of the things that, like, I just remembered, though, was, um, like, I think in Matthew there's this part where there's a, a wedding, a dinner, and, like, there's someone there that wasn't clothed properly. Right. And uh, I think Jesus, like, that spiritually the clothing is, like, it's, our, it's also our character and our morality and our integrity. And it's all the things that God is. He wants us to wear those things. And Jesus... He, he he wore it everywhere that he went. He yeah. he showed who God was. It says that he was like the perfect representation of the Father. Exactly. Yeah, and so I think like it wasn't like something that there's like I think there's like this I don't know phrase. It's like uh, I wear my clothes, my clothes don't wear me. And so like Jesus didn't need to say a lot. He just needed to show what that was. I like that. I like that because think about it. We know that Jesus is the second member of the Trinity. Jesus is God. And he chose to come to earth the regular way, not that noticeable, unless he chose to reveal himself as he, as his life went on, like you said, at age 12, he re- you know, his parents, the, the miraculous appearance of angels at his birth, all of those things. But like, like at least saying, he, he he kind of wore his divinity in such a way <laughs> that you, just like he says, so that they could see his good deeds and give glory to God, not to him. Just like we're supposed to let our light shine in such a way and Jesus lived in such a way that it didn't draw attention as much to him as it did to give glory to God or that was his purpose but a lot of people saw the miracles and and everything and and, you know recognized something about him Uh, and that like, like you said a lot of people today have to hit a bad point in their life before they're able to fully awake spiritually and see uh, God and who He is, and it's it, it, you're right. It, it's it's not the destination; it's the journey as we go through this life that God reveals Himself to us and to the world. And if He had a, just said, "Here I am," I'm I'm. God, the second member of the Trinity, you know, he would have set expectations so high that 
they wouldn't have listened to his words. That they would just be saying, "This is God. This is God. Whatever He says, this is God." You know, and, and uh, it wouldn't have sank into their being and changed them. And that's why God is very judicious. I think very judicious about you know making shows of power because people are attracted to that, but. Are they really accepting it for what, what God is intending it to be? And, and, and all that he does is to show himself and, and like, like you said, uh, make us want to know more, to seek him. And that's so important. Any, anybody else? Any other thoughts? Uh, something just a small side note, like where you're talking about the Trinity, it's like when you're talking about you know, Jesus, the Son of God, um, Important to realize, like he wasn't created. Correct. Yeah. You know, like he's the son of God. Yes, but he's not in the sense like God made him. Exactly. He, like he, he is, is God. Like he is eternal, just like the Father. Is yes. Eternal. Exactly, yeah. Eric. You're they very. Were, they were not made any of them. And now, think about that. What what Eric just said. We don't have much time to think about that. We know those of you who know your Bible that. The angel of the Lord, we've talked about that in the Old Testament. Those were the appearances of the pre-incarnate Christ. And then, of course, Christ came born of a virgin into a human body. And he resurrected into a third type of form, a resurrected body. And, uh, and Jesus himself says... <laughs> The words that I speak are spirit and life. The flesh counts for nothing because the physical form, you know, with God can change, yeah. right? And, and so that in itself, the, the, the body of Christ, uh, the physical, spiritual body of Christ is a mystery to us, but it, it's something to, to think about that uh, God's not limited and in the future, we're going to have different bodies not be limited. Any other thoughts? We are at the end. If anybody doesn't have any final thoughts, let's pray. Father, thank you for revealing yourself through your son Jesus. Father, thank you that he is uh, you in the flesh. Thank you that he did your will and not his will, Father. He showed us through his good works and his obedience, Father, uh, you, Father, and the love that you have for us all. Help us to share this understanding with others. Father, help it to change our lives, Father. Help us to be more motivated to share the good news that God is seeking relationship with everyone. And Father, we love you. We thank you. We ask you to work in our hearts and work into those the hearts of those we love, Father. In Jesus' name.